Hi, my name's Shelley, and today we're going to be talking about feeling anxious. Now, this is the first of four videos that you can access that will all help you to understand anxiety and learn some ways of dealing with it. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about what actually happens to us when those feelings start arising. Now, you might know anxiety under all sorts of different names. So some people might say they're feeling worried. Some people might say they're feeling scared or upset or fearful. And some people might not have any words to describe it. They might just know it as something that they don't want to do or when they, you get those fizzy feelings in your body and it, you just know that you just don't want to do something. It's becoming all too big and too much and too scary. And that's perfectly normal. We all have those feelings sometimes. So firstly, it's useful to know where those feelings come from. And we have our very, very distant relatives, the cavemen, to thank for it. So back in those days when the cavemen and cave women were around, they developed something called fight or flight. And you might have heard of that. You might have been doing something about it at school, in science or in PHSE or whatever other subjects that you might be studying at school. So fight or flight is a, a, an ancient reflex that we learn in our bodies in cavemen times. And the reason that this happened is because it was a survival instinct. In cavemen times, they, the things that they were confronted with that caused them stress and anxiety really were life and death situations. So here we have our caveman and cavewoman. And back in those days when they'd be going about their daily tasks, maybe the, the cavewoman was getting some berries or the caveman was going to the river for water, they might be confronted with things like a sabre-toothed tiger. And in those instances, they would literally have two choices. One choice is flight, which means running away, as you can see him doing in this picture from his sabre-toothed tiger. And the other choice was fight. He could fight that sabre-toothed tiger. Now, our brains are really, really clever. They store lots of thoughts, lots of memories, lots of ideas. And the fight or flight response is also stored in our brain. And it's made from times when we've felt anxious and we've had to respond in a certain way. And we've done the same thing over and over again to make ourselves feel safe. And that memory gets stored in our brain and becomes a pattern of behaviour for us. So for our caveman that met a sabre-toothed tiger the last time he went to the well to get water, those memories are stored in his brain and they create a pattern of behaviour for him that kind of dictates how he's going to behave and how he's going to feel. Some of the ways we might behave are these. It makes us feel shaky and sweaty, worrying that the worst might happen, giving us a dry mouth, feeling like we can't breathe and can't catch your breath, Wobbly legs, that feeling that your legs are like jelly. Crying and upset but not sure why. Feeling like you've got a tummy ache. Can't sleep, laying in bed with those thoughts running wild all night. Feeling scared, worrying about what's going to happen. Heart beating fast, and feel boom, boom, boom in your chest. Going pale, we spoke about that earlier. Not wanting to eat or sometimes eating too much, or maybe even just wanting to hide away. So as you can see, there's lots of different things that come up for us when we get anxious or worried. And back in caveman times, they were really useful to him. So things like getting sweaty, it meant that if that saber-toothed tiger grabbed hold of him, he was likely to be able to slip out of his grasp. Things like his heart pumping fast, it meant the blood was pumping to the big muscles in his body, which meant he could run away faster or he had you know, more power to, to fight the saber-toothed tiger. Um, and so, you know, back in those days, these things were all really helpful in helping them survive. Nowadays, not so much. But unfortunately, that little bit of our brain hasn't changed. So we still react in the same way we would have done 
all those years ago in Beckham caveman times. The difference now is there's so many more things around us that can give us those worries and that fear. So for some people, it might be things like um, going to school or going to a new school. At the moment, I guess there's lots of people are worrying about the virus, you know, and, and staying safe and staying well and your family and your friends and yourself all looking after yourselves and, and staying safe and what's going to happen afterwards. And these things are all kind of out of our control. We can't do that. But what we can do is look after ourselves and look after our brain and try and help ourselves find a different way of reacting when we feel worried or scared. And we're going to show you some of those in our next videos. So for me, talking to big groups of people or going to a place that I don't know and I've never been before always makes me feel worried. And I'll get a really dry mouth and I'll start feeling sweaty and I use these things myself. I use these ideas that Anna and I are going to share with you myself. And they really, really help me. And they help me focus and they help me calm down and they help me feel back in control. So I'm hoping that they're going to help you as well. At the moment, when we fall into anxiety, we come across whatever it is that makes us feel worried. And our brain shoots down this pathway and it tells us how to behave. And the more times we do that same thing over and over again, when we meet that thing that worries us, the quicker it is for our brain to jump to that same reaction over and over again. By practicing these things that Anna and I are going to show you, it's going to give you an option B. So instead of going to option A, option A, option A, the more times you, try, you practice these techniques, the more your brain's going to get used to there being another option and another way of reacting. So please give them a go. They don't work instantly. Nothing does. You know, the first time you think about when you was a small, small child, the first time you stood up, you couldn't run. And you practiced and you practiced and you practiced. And that was your another example. That's an example of your brain forming those connections and thinking okay so I stand up and I put one foot in front of the other and eventually when I've done it enough times I know I can walk and I know how to do that and you don't need to think about it anymore you do it without thinking the same when you learn to write the first time you picked up a pen or a pencil you couldn't write your name and I bet you could do it with your eyes closed now so your brain has stored those memories and stored those reactions to how you do those things and that's what we're going to do with these series of videos. So I hope these are really helpful to you and I hope they help you understand why we get worried about things. And it's okay to get worried about things, but there are some really positive and easy ways of managing it and making yourself feel safer and that you can deal with it.